Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. Terry Lynn, welcome to University of Eucadia Talk Show tonight. We have Frank Collins with us from Australia. We've got some more news, more uh, updates on the positive law. And Frank's got some more great information to share with us. So fasten your seatbelts. Get your pen and paper out, ready to take some notes if you like, and uh, ready for questions and answers during the uh, Q&A session. Those on the phone lines, if you press star 8, that'll be about an hour from now. Star 8 will put you in the question queue on the phone lines, and those of you on the chat, if you will type question in all uppercase, and then after that, put a colon, and then type in your question. In proper case, that helps us spot your questions over on the chat. I'll put in an example here shortly on how that will look. Also, those of you that are on your computers and online, that you can pull up one dash heaven one hyphen heaven dot org and go to the positive law. We'll be over on positive law here shortly, and we'll put in the link for that as well. Uh, Jeanette, if you can get that ready for index, that would help out a lot. Frank, I'm going to turn it over to you. And, uh, oh, I'll go ahead and set the date and time, uh, today being the third day of August 2011 over here in the States. And uh, with that, Frank, take it away. All right. Thank you. Look, thanks very much. And I'm I'm sorry if there's a little bit of a delay to start with, with folks. It's just... I was getting a little bit of a, an echo in the um, introduction. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for being on the call. The u- usual process will be that for the next hour, I'd like to cover with you the highlights that we've done over the last uh, week. There's a, some fantastic feedback and updates. And then uh, what we'll be doing at the second hour is answering questions that any of you might have. Uh, What I'm going to do, if I still hear this echo, is uh, for about 10 seconds, Terry, I'm just going to reset my microphone. It'll only take about 10 seconds. I'm still hearing that echo. So I'm going to just give me 10 seconds to reset my microphone. While I'm doing that, please, if I ask everyone, go and have a look at one heaven.org and the positive law we're going to go through some of the important updates the positive law has been updated now and I'll be going through that with you so just give me a few seconds just to quickly reset the mic and then I'll be ready to keep going about 10 seconds and hopefully we're not going to get that feedback now. Hope people can hear me. Okay. Now, um, first off, the three things I want to cover tonight is I want to cover the updates and completions of of positive law. I also want to talk first about some of the feedback of previous conversations because we've been talking for some time now. And on, on a number of those chats, when we've spoken about those things, the information that we have has been updated, and I want to talk about some of the history of that. I also want to cover off the Bank for International Settlement presentation as well. Let me start just firstly with this, with, with an issue which is always an issue whenever you are in the process of discovering information, when you're in the process of learning, and that is the risk that something you've said six months ago may turn out to be incorrect or not valid six months hence when you've discovered more information. Now I have been raised, a number of people raised a point with me because at the time I said it in quite an emphatic way and that is when I said that prisons are full of executives. We are now at a position where we understand more about trust law where we understand that, in fact, when it comes to our body, our mind, our spirit, by divine right, we are, in fact, executives of our body. And that no one can claim to own our body or to administrate our body. We are 
uh, dealing with a, um, a situation where we are the executives of our bodies. We are the general executor. And this is a role that they claim. So when I said that, that the prisons are full of executives, it wasn't actually technically wrong. What I should have said, if I had known at the time, is that the prisons are full of executives that are acting as trustees. So to anyone that is uncertain, when they've listened to some of the audios six months ago or seven months ago, I just want to say two things. Firstly, I apologise if six months ago the information that we now have wasn't as clear then as it is now. And two, when a number of this, these things have been said, it turns out that they may not be technically incorrect, just the information was not fully there. The exciting thing tonight is, as we discussed last week, we have a much, much clearer insight into the presumptions that are used against us whenever we face the private bar guild. So I'm excited now to share with you additional information at the completion now of the revisions of positive law. And the positive law I'm referring to are the canons of positive law that are located on one-heaven.org. And when you get there, if you click on positive law, you'll go to the canons of positive law. So we now have 333 uh, articles of positive law. It's been a substantial expansion of what was there previously. But it was necessary because the revisions came about from the feedback you provided me. People were going to court. People were asserting their position. People were standing confidently and saying, I am the executor, and still finding that the courts were not showing the respect that they should. Not all the pieces were in place. Now, before we get into the updates, there's probably one more thing that's worth discussing, and it's this question that keeps coming up. Do we really need to know all this? I know for many, and I'm included, the law to me was seen as, as, as really uh, an unnecessary burden. I felt much of it was uh, rituals and customs that had no relevance to my life or who I thought or knew or who I was. And in fact, I know that there are still many who promote the idea that any form of system in itself is merely perpetuation of the problem. And I know that those same people are also heavily promoting the idea that learning the law really is in a form of acquiescence. Well, I vehemently oppose those notions. And I think those notions are founded, unfortunately, on a great degree of ignorance in themselves. Society and the fact that we live in societies, the fact that we live in communities, even if we live in a family, requires some form of cooperation, requires some form of common recognition and respect. Now, if you want to call that uh, simple creed or you want to call that commandments or you want to call that faith or you want to call that scripture or you want to call that law, that's entirely up to you. But we call it, and, and I call it, law. It is a form of law. It is a form of rules. It is a form of common ground by which we can live and survive. And no matter what we try to do, law is a fundamental key to the healing and restoration of our society. Everything in our society functions according to some presumed set of rules. So if we are going to change, if we are going to see an end to the madness, it is not rejecting systems. It is not rejecting uh, the need to stand, hold account, and bring these people uh, to accounting. It is embracing the realisation that we all represent the necessary restoration of the law. And with that in mind, let's have a look at some of these latest understandings that feed into the discussion last week, which is about the 12 presumptions of the law. Now, the 12 presumptions of the law that I'm referring to was under a section called uh, Roman Courts. 
and that is article number 299. So for those that are on the call for the first time, what I'm referring to is that under Canon 3228 of article 299 called Roman Court of the Canons of Positive Law, for the first time that I have seen, we presented 12 key presumptions by which the private bar guilt claim ownership, custody, control over us if we ever have to deal with their courts. Now I hope and trust that those that are on the call that were there last week have had a chance to review these. And for those that are listening for the first time, welcome. And I hope you have a chance to go through and review those. Presumption of public record, number one. Number two, the presumption of public service. Number three, the presumption of public oath. Number four, the presumption of immunity. Number five, the presumption of summons. Number six, the presumption of custody. Number seven, the presumption of court of guardians. Number eight, the presumption of court of trustees. Nine, the presumption of government acting in two roles as executor and beneficiary. Ten, the presumption of executor de son tort. Eleven, the presumption of incompetence. And twelve, the presumption of guilt. I hope you have the time to go through those and review them because I do believe this is extremely valuable and timely information. Now, tonight, as the positive law has now been finished and the 333 articles are now there, what I like to do is provide more substance behind those 12 presumptions in particular areas where there is still a lot of debate and discussion. And I think the first one that I'd like to deal with, because it's one that we have mentioned previously, is cleaning up the facts and the myths surrounding the birth certificate. Now, to do this, I'm going to ask all of you on the call and those that listen later on, please, to go to Article 325, Settlement Birth Certificate. 325 Settlement Birth Certificate. When you get there, I hope when you, uh, you all get to Article 325, we're going to go through and we're going to have a look at what is a birth certificate, what is a settlement certificate. And with your indulgence, I'm going to read some of these canons and then provide some additional information around them. But they are in themselves pretty straightforward. Now, one more thing. Before we start, there's been a lot of chatter, as there has been around Eucadia, there's a lot of chatter around the, the whole internet as to what does the birth certificate represent. Now, when I was first looking at this material, I heard from a number of sources that the birth certificate represented some uh, key, some key that allowed us to access some fabulous wealth that was tied away in places like the DTC. That was one of the rumours I heard. Another rumour I heard was that it, it represented uh, part of an indenture in terms of trusts, and I heard that one. Uh, I, I've heard now more recently, because there's been quite a bit of discussion on this now, where people are claiming that the birth certificate is like a share certificate, that it really represents our share of some greater estate. That we, it represents us being a shareholder. And I've also heard people now saying absolutely emphatically that a birth certificate is a receipt. Well, let's make this clear because a number of you, because of this increased activity and discussion, have been nervous as to why in Eucadia we recommended that a copy of a copy of your birth certificate was used as the vehicle in which to transmit an ecclesiastical deed poll. And a number of you were nervous that if these other stories are true, had you in fact given up something great value? Let's make that absolutely clear. 